dependencies that it needs, and it takes advantage of frameworks to access any shared resources that it might need. It also uses AppArmor to um, create a confined application and specify any security feature that you need. Um, clicks were used to package applications for the initial round of Gucci touch devices, um, giving them a little bit of headline. Um, these devices ran here instead of X11, as well as Unity A's display server, uh, which sort of gave us our combined ecosystem. But these tool chains were, um, were missing some important features and lack maturity. So fast forwarding to today, we've seen the emergence of Snap Packaging, also referred to as Snappy. Snappy is essentially another iteration on clicks, giving better version management, sleeker application confinement definitions, and new ways to interface with system resources. You can use Snaps today on modern Ubuntu or several other distros. Um, Snaps will all live in a special root directory and can be completely confined when installed from stable channels or unconfined when installed from unstable channels if you must. Um, Snap apps come bundled with all of their dependencies pulled locally, meaning that all apps will have the dependencies they need and not break whenever they want. No longer needing to wait on package maintainers to get them into the new distro. Um, Snaps are automatically updated once a day. Uh, taking the pressure off of the user to keep their system up to date. And snaps come with the option for Delta updates, which means that the toolchain can download a diff instead of an entire package, potentially making downloads smaller and faster. And as confinement is concerned, snap apps are relegated to their read only piece of the process and by default, uh, requiring interfaces to be connected to perform system tasks such as using the display, using audio, and using the network. It's not to use in a hybrid or classic environment, in addition to a traditional package manager, we can continue to pull in and use our classic applications while enjoying confinement security in our migrated apps. However, one exciting premise of Snaps is the ability to run in all Snaps environment, which we, I think, call a to personal. Yeah. But this puts us in a bind. We can't run classic apps in this all Snaps environment. Our good old classic applications are looking for an unconfined system, and are looking for the X11 display server. And this all snaps environment appeared to give them neither. We need a way around this issue to give to allow users to run applications just like they would in a classic system. So to resolve this, we've been working on a suite of tools which we call Libertine. Uh, a Libertine is a person who acts without moral restraint. Libertine is an extreme form of hedonism. Living one's life for pleasure while only thinking of oneself. In a sense, our classic applications are practicing libertines, and it's our job to pull them back into more high standing. These applications need a safe place to go wild while the rest of the world falls in line, and we provide the safe space as a Linux container. Containers uh, are generally unrecognizable from a traditional Linux desktop experience. A libertine container has its own file system to work with, and binds to system resource directories to access things like home and some system resources. Uh, internally, we continue to use apt and dpackage to manage our packages, even when the host system is not allowed to use dpackage, even if dpackage is installed on the host system. Libertine also connects to a, uh, a program called XMIR, which allows us to run an X11 window isolated on top of MIR. Every installation, removal, and system modification is done internally, uh, here, protecting the outside world from whatever these classic applications may be doing to the file system. Uh, in the Libertine suite, has many parts to abstract away the underlying implementation of classic computers as best as possible. C++ library and GUI, Python launchers and command line interfaces, and tools to, uh, tools to control other aspects like launching XMIR, and to control the clipboard. I'll go over a few of these now. Again, a little difficult to see. Um, this is just JSON, uh, dictionary, and arrays, and all the good JSON stuff. So we use, Libertine uses JSON as a database file, keeping track of all install packages, creating containers, um, modified bind mounts, um, and we just use it as a database, uh, maintained individually for each user on a system. And, and using JSON, we found uh, lets us not depend on any database frameworks, which is good um, for our use, because then we can also just ask users for the raw database file, and they don't mind if it's 30 or 40 lines of JSON. 
Uh, and so the crux of our container management is our Python library. Of course, it contains an abstraction around the database that we just saw and utility functions, but uh, the, the primary use is to abstract away the process of handling different implementations of Libertine containers. Of which we support three types, Chirut, LXC, and LXD. Uh, Chirut is a special case maintained only for use on devices with kernels too old to support LXC or LXD. With a Chirut backend, we use the Thinker command line tool to create a base database system and use home directory. Uh, as a true jail from which we'll run all of our commands and applications. And when running commands within a shrew, we use a tool called Pruit. And we'll generally try to run Pruit on privilege to run that command within our shrew jail, but every now and then we have to run privilege Pruit commands. Uh, and so we prefer not to use shrew command containers. We consider them deprecated, though still useful. But LXC containers have been our preferred container type for most of Libertine's lifetime. LXC combines the kernel C groups with support for isolated namespaces to provide an isolated environment for applications. LXC folds based on the enforced and copying the home directory. Oh, no. I forgot that I was muted. Yeah. Oh. oh, no. Sorry. Sorry to the listeners at home, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah. it back from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're, we're ca capturing the sound from the camera, but it's just not perfect. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, so we create unprivileged LXC containers, set up the hosting inside of the containers so that give you access to home and system directories. Um, and setting up unprivileged LXC to integrate with traditional desktop features can be tricky. And we go to great lengths to ensure that we can access things like audio from the system. Uh, I'll also note that the LXC Python API is quite mature and works relatively well for our needs. For instance, uh, this is a code sample showing how we use the LXC container as attach method to run our command within the container and pure Python. But the newest and shiniest backend for Libertine is, L is LXC containers. LXC is a new face on top of the LXC implementation. Simplifying container management and frequently providing speed and usability improvements as well. Libertine LexD containers are outliers in that we depend on the LexD backend to uh, maintain the uh, to maintain the root file system. Though we still uh, maintain locally the user's home directory and local applications directories. So the most part, setting up LexD is just like how we set up an LexD container. We buy massive devices, map the current users in the system, and install some default packages. One, uh, I guess one weird thing about LXD is how we have to set up slash run slash user. Slash run slash user is a system directory for storing files and running processes when LXD there starts. Um, this directory unfortunately is overwritten completely when it starts, so we need to remap it uh, using the sound startup, startup scripts. To work around this, we create a custom script and copy it into the container. This script creates a missing directory, fixes permissions, and remaps things like slash run slash user. To ensure the system is in the order. Um, we add the files to the container using the files API, which is back there, um, which is part of the Python LXD package. But the Python API for LXD is not quite mature enough that we can use it for all of our use cases. So we use a hybrid solution to the Python API and calls to be open to start processes manually. As an example here, we use the Python API to update those two devices. It's just a dictionary, um, and we use the Python Pilot the API to create this profile, update the dictionary, and save, using LexD exceptions to tell us when there's an error. Um, on the other hand, when we run applications, we have to use psdsolo.p open to launch applications, because that's the best way for us to run LexD applications in the background while still getting all of the output in the foreground. Um, so we also have these services that are responsible for making sure the containers are started and stopped appropriately in LXC and LXD. Um, this is to help with safe battery life so that the containers aren't started all the time. Uh, and it ensures that when a user stops one container, the, or stops one application within a container, the container doesn't stop 
but we'll wait for all applications to be closed. Uh, moving on to user realm of binaries. Um, we have a Python library or a Python binary called the Container Manager, which allows users to essentially create and manage containers and install packages and modify them by mounts. Um, this is basically a review of using the Lubricant Container Manager to create a container. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, we just call them uh, create subcommand with any number of flags, all of which have intelligent defaults except for ID, so the user doesn't have to know what kind of uh, container backend we're using. Uh, here I've shown that as just a black box, and then it just updates the database and adds all of the file system things using the given containers backend. <coughs> Um, and this is similarly just what installing a package would look like. Uh, note that a package name may not line up with the binaries installed, but we're only keeping track of what the user explicitly asks us to install. Because the purpose of the <coughs> container manager is to prevent the user from having to deal with the low-level concepts of any particular container type or package management system, and focus on the key concepts of, of creating and installing. We also have a DBus service written in Python to replace the work being done by the last application we saw. Um, all of this isn't fully implemented yet. Um, but many of the commands that, that we use in the Machine Container Manager take a very long time to run, and bad things will happen when those commands are interrupted. Uh, for instance, stopping the package, of course, will cause or, or can cause broken packages to appear in the system. Uh, Liberty and being to solve that by doing a completely asynchronous method where we use Python threads and send updates to DBus signals. Um, and although we would like to replace the Libertine Container Manager back in with this in the future, we currently just use it to list container paths and application IDs. Uh, which brings us to LibLibertine, um, which is the root of discovering container information for several external libraries. It's currently a wrapper around a client for LibertineD, and many of the low-level ad libraries that access LibLibertine are written in C++. And Libertine gives them a convenient way to access Libertine information without having to talk directly to DBus. The code example seen here is just us making a simple DBus call from C++. Uh, we also have a GUI written in C++ with QML. This is an easy way for us to manage containers and even allows us technical users to be able to easily manage containers and install packages. It's mostly a series of lists showing you how you can do it. Uh, a list of containers in which you click through the list of packages. Um, for the most part, functionality GUI is the same as it is in the mainline tool. And now the real meat is Libertine Launch, which is a Python tool that we use to actually launch applications. What it, Libertine Launch will do is clean up the environment for running apps and then forward that environment to the container implementations to actually run the application. The machine launch can be used from a terminal, but we generally prefer it to be used from a launching tool, like in Ubuntu and Unity 8, we use Ubuntu app launch. PSD is a daemon. It's a, it's a companion binary to help applications use the clipboard. Uh, we just use cute signals and swaps to wait for copy and paste events uh, from the underlying console hub, and then we forward those events to our excellent apps. And in doing this, we can use copy and paste pretty much like we would in uh, these applications in a classic desktop. So what actually happens when we launch applications to Libertine? By clicking on our desktop icon, we'll call Libertine Launch with a container ID and application exec line, which was probably found uh, using LibLibertine, which found that information out using Libertine D. Uh, Libertine Launch will then start utilities, uh, like paste it next year. It'll set up the session by cleaning up the environment and setting up a whole bunch of sockets to communicate between the two. And uh, then it will launch a container instance based on the Python library, which will then do any number of things based on the container type, like update bind mounts, launch a window manager to connect to an instance of X, and finally launch the app. And that's most of the full picture. To review, we build a container using one of the libertines and set it up to install applications through app, even when app is not in the system. Libertine keeps the container and its classic application can find to their root file system in a small folder to let them access things like the home directory and system resource directory. 
At which point, something or some or someone can launch the application via Liberty Launch, which will prepare the container environment. Uh, from here, the host show the window manager inside the container connected to the host display variable and launch applications. Uh, given all of that, where can we actually use Liberty? The answer is, well, in most of our modern major systems. Uh, Unity 7 is the current default desktop session in Ubuntu, and using Libertine in Unity 7 is a little bit silly, because Unity 7 is not a confined environment. It already runs X11, and already installed package to package. But I think it's worth noting that we can use Libertine just as well here, in order to allow users to run their applications in a confined container, without plucking up their system. Uh, because Unity 7 is already running X11, Libertine's classic apps can use the running X server to connect to their window manager. So we don't need any special tools for that. Um, and because Unity 7 is not a, um, a target platform, applications in Libertine containers are automatically discovered by the Unity Dash, so you have to jump through some hoops to get them to show up, um, either by writing some findable desktop files, or by manually launching Libertine Launch. Alright, so Unity 8 is a new and improved version of Unity 7, running mirrors as display server instead of X, and pre-installed in Ubuntu. <coughs> Desktop Unity 8 is also not particularly compliant, but running mirrors instead of X alleviates some of our previous security things. Mirror Unity 8 can run some applications natively, such as modern Qt apps, but are unable to run all of our classic apps natively just yet. And Libertine works well in Unity 8. And it's built into the application discovery logic. You guys can hear, search for Pingus, and it's come up. Um, click on icon for a Libertine Classic app, it's a brand Libertine launch, just as we normally would, uh, except in this case, there's no X11. So the system will also start instances of X mirror to, um, for their four applications to attach to Window Manager 2. X mirror allows us to run X11 apps on an isolated window on top of mirror. Each running Libertine application will get its own X mirror bringing online communication between the apps. And with this step, we successfully launched X apps in a non-X environment. So, similarly, in Ubuntu Touch, um, Ubuntu Touch also runs Unity in the air, and therefore can't run cloud apps on its own. Uh, furthermore, users were prevented from using app to to install apps due to Ubuntu Touch being on its final system by default. So even apps that would work in a desktop Unity 8 session might not be installable and runnable. And you can touch session. And with varying hardware and street sizes, the plugs can still always run as well on a Ubuntu Touch. But on some devices, like the BQM10, we pre install a Liberty container with an essential classic apps, such as LibreOffice and XJAX. And we found that they were just fine, and it gave us a peak at a truly converted environment. Of course, we use everything almost exactly the same way here as we did in this WDA, uh, launching and attaching to the next variant. Because the older kernel on the internet requires to be used for which is one of the reasons we need to screw basic containers around. Alright, so our end goal has always been to run classic apps in a completely confined ecosystem, which brings us to Snaps. As mentioned, Snaps are a packaging system to allow complete confinement. They make your personal, the system requires only Snaps. Uh, in fact, in the of Snap, we build up between the source, you can see and create one large package file. We need to update some padding and environment uh, and variables to be more flexible for snaps. And we need to make some architectural changes to list Libertine and Libertine B. Uh, snaps also encouraged us to hurry the production of our Libertine container back in because there's a Lexi snap available that we can use. In order to access the resources and snaps, you have to connect to the interfaces, and we connect to quite a few. Um, this is a short list currently that we use. LexD, obviously, connect to LexD. Network and network bind, connect to sockets and network. Home to connect to the used home directories, and all the rest of your sound of graphics. Okay, live demo. Uh, this never works, <coughs> right? Well, a plot twist. <coughs> I've been running uh, this uh, presentation in Firefox, running a Libertine container, and snap the whole time. So it works. Um, but it might be interesting to also run some other applications real quick. Something like X10. Uh, 
And we can say Firefox, and you can see the command that's being run within the container. And this is running completely isolated in its own uh, root file system, completely separate from the host. Um, what else? Let's see, we can run something like Leafpad, edit documents, and I can open something that already exists, it's a test file. And it all saves fine. And it doesn't crash, which is good. <laughs> um, and one more, how about some Minesweeper? And there, well, we're pretty good, we got 200. This is on Unity 8? This is all on Unity 8, yeah. Um, so yeah. To be clear, this is Libertine running on Unity 8. Libertine is a snap running Linux D uh, containers. And with that, we can uh, go ahead and finish up. Oh, wrong. Ignore that. <laughs> to very quickly review, we wanted to be able to run classic desktop applications in a fully confined, um, in a fully confined Xless uh, ecosystem using a packaging format. And we use Libertine to do just that, mostly through Linux containers. And there's a bit of wizardry in the back end with snaps. And we have this working on a lot of our modern machines. There's obviously a lot that we're still working on. Um, all of these things, Unity 8, Mir, uh, and Liberty, and Snap, are all moving a mile a minute development wise. Um, and a lot of stuff is still broken. Like we have trouble with a lot of apps that use bus. Um, our snaps are really big. Um, I recently <coughs> I mean, think, think I might have made a regression where audio doesn't work in the snap, but. That's called working too hard on that demo. Uh, and that's it for me. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening. That's all my contact information. I think we might be out of time. Uh, well, I'm right on time, so <laughs> right on time. I have Tomas uh, wants to set up. Uh, Rari can ask us some questions, but um, it will not be recorded because the recording is cutting into the email. Okay. So we can do questions. Um, so are there any questions? Yes. All of the apps are running in a state container, so there is one we were today. So right, so the system yeah. is made up yeah. such that we could, you could create as many containers as you want. And then uh, our underlying backend will know which container ID is the which container is the right one to run the application in. All of these are running in the same container. And so if you want to like go against what you said in the beginning, that it was like you know, one application tries to get the other one in this case. Right, so they all run, so we work around the problem with snooping on each other. Does anyone have a HDMI to VTA up so that we can move? Yeah, so like we prevent the apps from talking to each other through like X11 by using individual instances of XMIR for, and I think you can go ahead and unplug probably. And so each application will have its own XMIR that it's running at. But they can still all talk to the same file system. Yes? What about Quilo? No Not comment. <laughs> Although I'll say it's nice to have a diverse ecosystem with new display servers and uh, packaging formats on the horizon. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Thank you.